All right, in this video, we're going to try to understand the cardiac cycle as a graph. So we understand the cardiac cycle conceptually, right? Using images and using terminology. But here what we're gonna to try to do is we're gonna take a look at the graph. I gave you a copy of this graph in the notes and we'll see if this makes sense when we look at it in graph form. So taking a look at some of the lines on the graph, we're just gonna look at a few lines at a time. Um, the heart chamber pressure, I can see that atrial pressure uh, they're graphing that out over time. Atrial pressure is the black line on the graph. I'm going to highlight that in pink just so we can see the atrial pressure a little bit better. So I can see atrial pressure like we were looking at on the worksheet. It stays pretty low over time. Uh, ventricular pressure is also, you know, low at points in time, but then it looks like it also gets to be, you know, high, and I bet that's when the ventricles are contracting like we were looking at. So ventricular pressure is low during ventricular diastole, and then you can see it's high during ventricular systole. And the other line I want to look at right away is the aortic pressure, or we can think of this as the blood vessel pressure. They're just looking on the left, and we see that the blood vessel pressure, that black line, is staying higher than the heart chamber pressure over time, which makes sense because there's a smaller volume inside of a you know smaller blood vessel, and so that has a higher pressure inside, so it stays at a higher pressure over time. And so just taking a look at um, the scale on the y-axis, they're looking at pressure, and here's zero pressure, and then you can see it's going up to 120 millimeters of mercury in pressure. So that's, we're just looking at pressure, low to high on the y-axis. And then on the x-axis, we're just looking at time. And one nice thing they do on this chart is they divide up the time between ventricular systole, so that's when the ventricles are contracting, and you can see they put those, these two vertical lines going right through the graph to make it easier for us to see when the ventricles are contracting. And then this period of time is ventricular diastole, now the ventricles are relaxing. And then of course, the ventricles contract, and the ventricles relax, and so on. So let's take a look at the um, uh, the pressures, how they change. Let's start by looking at ventricular pressure. So I can see that before the ventricles contract, before ventricular systole, ventricular pressure is, you know, pretty low. It's, it's lower than atrial pressure. But once ventricular systole starts, when the ventricles start to contract, very quickly ventricular pressure exceeds atrial pressure. And we were saying right at that point in time, when ventricular pressure gets higher than atrial pressure, that's going to cause the AV valves to close. Ventricles continue to contract, it's building pressure, and when that pressure in the ventricle meets the blood vessel pressure and eventually exceeds the blood vessel pressure, that causes the semilunar valves to open. And do you see how the blood vessel pressure is high, but once the ventricular pressure meets and exceeds blood vessel pressure, the blood vessel just takes on the same pressure as the ventricle because this is the period of time when the stroke volume is being ejected into the blood vessels. Now, we can see that the ventricles are going to go into diastole as indicated by that vertical line, and so ventricular pressure is starting to go down, and when ventricular pressure goes below blood vessel pressure, that's going to cause the semilunar valves to close. And you can see that when the semilunar valves close, blood vessel pressure stays high. There's even that, what's called a dichrotic notch. That is the blood within the blood vessel basically backing up against the closed semilunar valves. So you can imagine if blood backs into the ventricle and the semilunar valve is closed, there's going to be a bulge uh, in that vessel wall. There's a, this transient increase in pressure that's what that dichrotic notch is showing us. So it's like the blood crashing against the closed semilunar valve, and then the blood will move forward. But continuing on where we were with the ventricle, ventricular pressure decreases. And as ventricular pressure decreases at a point, ventricular pressure decreases below atrial pressure. And as soon as the uh, atrial pressure is higher than the ventricular pressure, that's going to force the AV valves to open. And what will happen from here is we're in ventricular 
diastole, we're in atrial diastole too, and once the AV valve's open, this is that period of time where the ventricles are just passively filling with blood because the AV valves are open. And to follow this out, to trace this out, right at the end of ventricular diastole, right at the end of ventricular relaxation, I'm noticing that atrial pressure goes up a little bit and ventricular pressure rises right along with that. You know, what is that? That's the period of time of atrial systole. So this is when the atria contract and push that remaining 30% of blood into the ventricles. Ventricles feel that little increase in pressure. But once ventricular systole starts again, at that point in time when the ventricular pressure exceeds atrial pressure, that's going to close the AV valves. Ventricular pressure increases. It meets the blood vessel pressure exceeds blood vessel pressure, that's going to open the semilunar valves, blood is ejected from the heart. When ventricular pressure drops below blood vessel pressure, semilunar valves close, blood crashes against those closed semilunar valves, ventricular pressure continues to decrease, and when ventricular pressure goes below atrial pressure, AV valves open and blood's passively filling the ventricles. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's take a look at ventricular volume. So as far as, you know, like the volume, how much blood is in the ventricle? Well, during ventricular systole, because blood is being ejected, I would expect that volume to go down, which they're showing us. And then during ventricular diastole, I expect that volume to go up. So this is when the ventricles are filling. So there's your 70% of passive filling. There's your 30% of the atria topping it off. And then the ventricles contract and eject all of that blood. So that's the ventricular volume line. And let's take a look at the EKG line. So we know for ventricular systole, for ventricular contraction to occur, what happened was an electrical message swept to the heart. That electrical message is something called the QRS complex. So notice how the QRS complex is occurring just prior to ventricular systole. And then here's the T wave, T wave, that repolarization occurring just prior to ventricular diastole. And then this is interesting too. Remember the P wave? Uh, P wave is atrial depolarization. And so you can see how atrial depolarization occurs just before atrial systole. So taking a look at the last line on this chart, the heart sounds. Do you remember what we can hear in the cardiac cycle? You know, can we hear muscle contract? You know, no, we can't hear muscle contract. We know that. Uh, what you hear uh, with the heart is you hear the valves closing. And so we can see when the AV valve closes, that's lub, that made a sound. And then when the semilunar valves close, that, that's the uh, dub that makes a sound. So when the valves close, we can hear that, the lub-dub. So hopefully this uh, helps you to understand this type of graphic representation of the cardiac cycle.